Preparing for an earthquake. Many of us live in earthquake country, and if we live in places with earthquakes, we should be ready for them. When is that earthquake coming? Well, if anyone tells you that there's going to be a large earthquake next week at 7 p.m., you should be very, very skeptical. Scientists cannot predict the actual date of an earthquake. The best we can do is predict the probability. And there is a high probability that there will be a 6.7 or greater earthquake in the next 30 years. There's almost certain to be a 6.7, but very likely to be a 7.5. Now that's the kind of earthquake you should be prepared for. How do you prepare? You secure your house. You collect earthquake supplies. You make a plan of what to do during an earthquake. You practice it and plan what to do after the earthquake. You might have heard of the Triangle of Life. It's a suggestion by Doug Kopp about what to do during an earthquake. Unfortunately, his suggestions are off the mark and downright dangerous. If you want a good source of what to do before and after an earthquake, go to the Red Cross or go to FEMA. I did to create this podcast. First, you want to secure your house. Houses in United States, California especially, are built to a high building code. Perhaps not as stringent as the building codes in Japan, but they're still very good. Most houses will do just fine during an earthquake. They should, however, be secured to their foundation. You can bolt and brace water heaters and gas appliances and bolt tall, heavy furniture to wall studs. And look, where are your shelves and pictures and mirrors located? Do you have heavy trophies above your bed, mirrors that can break. Rearrange your house in a way that these things won't fall down where people spend their time. Where's your bed? If it's next to the window, is there some better place to put it? You can install strong latches and bolts on your cabinets. And here's a simple thing. When you put things in the cabinets, put the heaviest ones near the floor. One important thing to do is to find out where your gas meter is and show everyone in your family how to shut it off. Also, have a wrench handy so that it can be done quickly. We can expect that we will be without help for at least three days. The firemen, the policemen, they're going to be busy. So you've got to be able to take care of yourself and don't expect that you'll have any electricity. One of the most important things that you can have supplied is water. You need about one gallon of water per person per day. It's easy to buy these big five-gallon jugs. Non-perishable food, flashlights, and extra batteries. And where do you keep them? Well, next to the bed, of course. Because that earthquake is likely to happen in the middle of the night. With no light, you're going to want the flashlight and you're going to want to put on shoes or slippers. There might be a lot of glass on the floor, so have some shoes under your bed. Medical supplies and first aid, of course, is very important. You might want a battery-powered or hand-cranked radio. They're easy to find. Water will need to be sterilized, so liquid bleach does that very well. A few drops in the water until you can just barely smell the bleach Wait 30 minutes and it should be safe. Hygiene. There's not going to be water coming out of the tap to wash your hands with, so it might be a good idea to have plenty of hand sanitizer around. Oh, speaking of that, you may not have a toilet working, so having plenty of plastic bags for a makeshift toilet is a good idea. I know, it's icky. Get over it. Extra cash. Don't expect ATMs to be up and working anytime soon. So if you want to buy stuff without looting, please have your own cash. It's a great idea to put these supplies in your car. Also in your car, you might want an emergency blanket for warmth. This is something your entire family should discuss. Where will you meet after the earthquake? Please understand that school must take attendance before releasing any students. So students should never consider just going home even if they're within walking distance. They must have their attendance taken and parents will have to wait. 
our phones may or may not be working. Landline receivers will be off their sets. So it's going to be hard to get calls out. So it's a great idea to decide upon an out-of-state contact. We don't know if cell phones will be working or not. So consider the possibility that your cell phone may not work. However, if you have cousins in New York, you might want to decide that the entire family calls them and they can relay information back and forth. It will be much easier to get a hold of somebody out of state than somebody in the earthquake-prone area. Your cell phone might not work, but at least you can look up the number on your cell phone. When the earthquake happens, the drill is simple. Duck, cover, and hold. Duck and cover underneath a table or a desk and hold because that desk is going to start shaking with you under it. If you don't have a table, find an inside wall. They're much less likely to collapse than an outside wall. Cover your head. I assume that's the most important part of your body. Keep your head lower than the furniture. So, for example, if you wake up in the middle of the night in an earthquake and there's no desk to go under, then get beside your bed, lower than your bed, and put your pillow over your head. Please don't panic and run outside. Statistically speaking, you're much more likely to get hit by something as you exit a building. What if you're in your car during the earthquake? Great, good place to be. Just pull over. Of course, you want to avoid overpasses and underpasses for obvious reasons. If you're outside, that's a wonderful place to be. Nothing's going to fall on you. But do be careful of downed power lines. You cannot touch a downed power line or anything that it touches. And if somebody else makes the mistake of touching it, you cannot help it them. After the earthquake, go outside. After a big earthquake, there will be aftershocks. And they may loosen some part of the building that had not fallen during the first earthquake. You might want to check utilities if you're home. If you smell gas, turn off the gas valve, open windows, and stay outside until the gas company has told you if it's safe or not. So, are you prepared? Well, if you haven't prepared yet, there's still time. I'd like to show you something that certainly has encouraged me to be prepared. This is an animation made by the Southern California Earthquake Center. This 7.8 earthquake might begin on the southernmost section of the San Andreas Fault down by the Salton Sea. I've put the cursor over by Los Angeles, so at this point, the waves have not hit Los Angeles. If we're lucky, by the time this happens, we might have an early warning system, giving us as much as a minute warning. That would be really, really useful. An earthquake doesn't happen along a fault all at once. It rips up a fault. The longer the fault, the bigger the earthquake. Also, the amount of shaking that goes on is not just a result of how close you are to the fault, but also to the kind of soil that you're on. Notice that the valleys and the basins shake more than the mountains. At this point, San Bernardino is experiencing great shaking as it goes beyond San Bernardino toward Palmdale and Lancaster. Finally, the shaking is starting to hit the Los Angeles area. Notice it's about 120 into the earthquake. For the next half minute, we are going to be experiencing a great amount of shaking. The fault has stopped moving, but the shaking continues. Now that's an earthquake that I don't want to see, but I'm afraid it's one of the more likely scenarios. Even if we manage to avoid that earthquake, 
we're likely to encounter some earthquake in the near future. And if we're prepared for an earthquake, hey, we're prepared for floods, tornadoes, terrorist attack, alien invasions, hurricanes, who knows. So it's always a good idea to be prepared.